In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at how to create a new namespace in vSphere with Kubernetes. We already have the cluster configured. I'm just having a look here at the workload management section, and nothing really to add here except to go ahead and create our new namespace. So you do have to select a cluster when you build a namespace, and you have to give it a name. And we're just going to call this demo-ns. So that's it created, and now we can have a look around in the summary of the namespace. We can see the config status, Kubernetes status, just telling us that it's been set up and it's ready to be used. What else is interesting here in this status window is the fact that we have the link to some CLI tools. Now there's two CLI tools. The first one here is the kubectl plus vSphere plugin, which allows us to connect to our namespace from a uh, command line. And the second one here is to do with Docker. So we will have Harbor already installed or instantiated, and this is allow us to push and pull images to our Harbor image repo. We will have a look at that in another demonstration. We can go ahead and add permissions to our namespace. So these could be coming from, um, go do your vSphere.local SSO, um, and also if you had some other R back integrated. We'll add storage next. Storage is essentially selecting some of the existing storage policies and making them available in our namespace. What's interesting about the storage policies is that they become instantiated as storage classes in the namespace. So storage classes are created by selecting storage policies from your namespace here. There's a few other things that are interesting to look at as well. We'll come back to limits in just a moment, but you can see down below that we have created a Harbor project automatically for every namespace. And there's our demo NS namespace created automatically in Harbor. We don't have any uh, repos yet, but it's something we will look at, as I said, in a future demo. So with that in mind, let's have a look at a few other um, of the features that we have available in the namespace. For instance, here we can see some Kubernetes events. This is the configuring of the Harbor um, repo once again, or the Harbor project. Nothing really to report in vCenter. There's a general configuration overview. It sort of reflects what we saw in the summary tab. Here you can just go ahead and add a description, something I didn't add when I created the namespace initially. Uh, resource limits, we haven't done anything with limits yet. Oh, we didn't do anything with limits in the um, summary either. What's interesting from a limits perspective, you can see you can do the same thing here, is that you can create limits on a per policy basis as well. So you can set up how many PVs and so on can be configured or how much space they can consume on a per limit basis as well. We also have objects limits, so you can go in and limit um, how much uh, resources are consumed by pods or deployments or, and so on. You can see, you get the idea there anyway, hopefully. Again, we didn't do anything with permissions. Uh, we haven't really deployed anything in the namespace that will come in a later demonstration, so there's not much to see from a compute perspective. But in the storage view here, you can see our storage policies. There's a config map for our uh, CSI controller. There's some secrets to do with authenticating with the namespace and also with Harbor here also. And uh, we don't have any PVCs or network objects created yet. So that concludes the demonstration.